Hey, what's going on, folks? It's Mike here, and welcome to the next lesson in our deep programming language series. In this lesson, we're going to continue talking about some of the semantics of the deep programming language. Now, I know what you might be thinking that we've been talking about semantics of this language over and over and over again, but there is more to learn, and I promise that it will be helpful for you as you become a better programmer, whether it's in the deep programming language or others. And it's to think about this idea of value and reference semantics. Now, again, if you're coming from languages like Java, C, C++, C Sharp, and so on, you've probably heard some of these terms before, but I want you to go ahead and understand what they are and how it makes a difference in your program. And in fact, in the deep programming language, the idea of value versus reference is quite important in some instances. So let's go ahead and look at an example. Now, the example that I want to start from is actually from a previous lesson where we looked at some of our pass by reference and pass by value examples. But what I really want you to focus on is this do something with array function here. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger and we'll kind of ignore the rest of the examples here. But the idea is the first thing that we'll do in our program is, well, do something with an array that we'll create here. And it's a dynamic array. And we're just going to append five to that array. And then I'm going to do something with the array, which is, well, the way I've organized this function, I just always change the first element in a dynamic array to 99999 here. Okay, so that just is the effect here. Now, when we learned about pass by value, we said, well, typically, if we don't put ref here, that's going to make a copy of this array. But this idea, if I actually run this program, and we look at the first printout here, and I'll go ahead and run it here. So from example 24 here, we'll see that this is in fact writing out the value 9999 into this array. So what's going on here? What's the actual difference this time when I said in previous lessons, if we want to modify an argument we're passing in, we have to use ref here. Well, this has to do with the reference semantics of this language. So let's go ahead and talk about that. I'll go ahead and open up another example here that I've got prepared here. And the easiest use case for me to think of is in the deep programming language, there's a difference between structs and classes. Structs use value semantics and classes use reference semantics. And that's important enough, I might as well put it on the whiteboard here just so we can keep track of that. So let's just hold on to this idea here. I'll say structs use value semantics and classes use reference semantics. And we're actually going to add to this list as we go on, but I just want to let you know that there is a distinguishment. But again, what do these things mean? Well, typically when we heard about value or pass by value, that meant a copy and reference meant refer to something that already existed. And some sort of other way to think about this is sort of sharing. Okay. And value usually meant copying. So let's just kind of keep those ideas in mind. Okay, so let's go ahead and now look at this in an ex actual example here. Now what I've set up here is a struct in a class. And in the D programming language, structs and classes are different. In fact, I'll revisit that idea later on in the series, I'm sure when I talk about classes and structs and dedicated videos. But let's go ahead and take a look at some of these examples here. Now I've provided four functions here pass value. So that means there's no ref here. And that's value type by value, pass value type by reference. So again, I said a struct is a value type in both these examples. So that's where the first part of this function is coming from. And then I have pass reference type, which is a class by value, and then pass reference type by ref here. So with the ref keyword explicitly shown here. So let's go ahead and see what this example does here. I'll go ahead and make this a little bit bigger so we can see everything. And let's actually run this. So again, a struct here, S1, and each of these just have two members here, uh, or, or one each data and data, which is default initialized to zero. Okay, so if I'm calling each of these functions, and I've just made them different values so you can see if they're being mutated, and then I'll immediately call after the function a right line so we can see if that data was changed. Okay, so pass value type uh, by value here. Let's go ahead and run this and examine the results. So I'll go ahead and run this. And here's our results. Okay, so going just line by line of our output here, I have pass value type by value. So again, that just means passing a struct into this function here. And then I write out the data. Well, 
again, if this is a value type, that means when I pass in S1 here, which has its data initialized to zero, and I change the data, nothing happens. Okay, so when I write out the data and get a zero here, nothing has changed here. So that's sort of as expected. That's what we've learned and consistent with what we've learned. Now, when I pass a value type by reference here, S1 again, and this time again, look at this function, I'm using the ref keyword. This in fact does change the data to two and that change is preserved and it's written out here. Okay, so again, as expected here. Now here's where things get a little bit interesting. So now I'm gonna switch this experiment and pass a reference type by value. That's a class, C1 here. And then when I write out the data, what I'm gonna get here is, well, the argument changes. But it says I'm passing this by value. Okay, so again, previously we've always learned when we omit the reference keyword here, we were getting a copy. So that's why it's important to understand these semantics. That's why this video exists here, because reference types like classes do modify the same reference. And you'll go ahead and notice that in this next example, pass reference type by ref, well, we can explicitly again write the ref keyword here and modify the underlying data. And that again changes our result of the underlying data for C1. But in either case, whether we're passing by value or passing by reference, because a class is a reference type, it is changing the data. And that's sort of to be expected. And again, if you're coming from a background of, say, C Sharp or, you know, Java or Python, there are instances where you pass in certain data types, whether they're lists in those languages or in our case, in the deprogramming language, classes or dynamic arrays or associative arrays or these different things that use reference semantics, then the data is changed. Now, why do we do this? Well, sometimes it just sort of makes sense because if I have a class here that's populated with a lot of different uh, members with you know huge dynamic arrays and all sorts of things, it's a lot cheaper to pass by reference. We're not making a expensive copy of whatever that data type is. So again, that's why there's this distinguishment of these uh, different types. And for those of you who are coming from a C programming background, you can of course pass by pointer and you know modify things that way. Uh, and that's also fine if you want other levels of control, but that's the idea here. Now, again, just to bring it back to this discussion of you know value semantics versus reference semantics, we also have to keep that in mind when it comes to comparing things. So let's go ahead down uh, to this next example that I've prepared. So I'll just go ahead and comment out a few lines here. So we don't have any output. And let's go ahead and start our next uh, experiment here. And what I'm going to go ahead and do here is just show that this struct here, if I to create two structs, S2 and S3, initialize their data to five. Well, we know that that's two separate structs in memory, right? If I took the address of S2 and the address of S3, those wouldn't be equivalent. There are two separate locations in memory, okay? There are two different variables here. But I did set their data to be five. So if I have a value type here and I do this comparison, let's go ahead and see what happens. When I run it, it's gonna say, well, the values are the same. Okay, because these are value types. It's just like if I created two integers here and I said int a uh, equals five or int b equals five. And in fact, if I compare a and b, you know, any sane person when they're learning uh, programming would also agree. Uh, oops, I just forgot my uh, semicolon. But this example, a and b, these values are the same. Okay, all the values stored inside of these structures, or in this case, just these integers are the same here. Okay, so let's get rid of that. Okay, so now that I've done that example with our structs here, let's go ahead and try it with our classes. Okay, so what I'll go ahead and do here is I'll create uh, our two classes here. Uh, let's go ahead and say c3.data uh, also equals five here. Okay, we'll sort of emulate this experiment. Okay, and in fact, um, well, let's go ahead and uh, just do C2 and C3. Okay, so they're gonna be default initialized here. Okay, and then I've got this sort of values are the same here, but what happened here? Well, what are C2 and C3? This is where we have to sort of pay attention. They're reference types. Uh, so in that case, what does that mean? Okay, let's try this experiment again and actually put some data here. I'll go ahead and run this. And I get something called a segmentation fault. Because with a reference type, 
I need to allocate some memory here. So C2, because it's a reference type, needs to be allocated memory. I need to set it equal to a new uh, class in this case, and C3 equal to a new class. Okay. Uh, now, we haven't talked a lot about memory allocation here, but the idea here is that I need to come here and say either uh, auto C2 equals new class and allocate some memory because the idea again with these reference types is I need to allocate some memory. So I'm just going to draw a box here representing memory for C2 to re refer to. And when I pass around C2 into other functions, they need to all refer to the same spot in memory here. OK, that's the basic idea. OK, so no matter how many things I have referring to this uh, same box here. OK, all right. So let's go ahead and see this example. I'll come back in here and uh, let's go ahead and set this up here again. I like using the auto uh, keyword, but this is the uh, equivalent. I'll do for C3 equals new class like this. Um, just so you can see it, I'll run it here. Uh, whoops, let's see, I made one uh, mistake, it looks like, because I don't need to uh, redefine these. So let me get rid of that here. Um, and it looks like, oh, looks like I just added um, my old uh, bad uh, habits here. Uh, let's just get rid of that um, uh, pointer there, because I don't actually need it, because I am uh, creating a uh, reference uh, type there actually. So uh, it's not not needed here. Uh, so anyways, <laughs> let me go ahead and run this. We'll see that it uh, compiles here. And now if I do this check here, even though that the values inside of each of the classes here, I've set to five for both of them. And then when I check the equality, they're still not the same here. Because when I'm doing this equality comparison, right, these two things don't refer to the same chunk of memory. Okay, I, I should actually be you know, checking. Uh, now, if I check if C2 is equal to C2, uh, the value is the same because it's sort of comparing the address here. OK, if I wanted to do this comparison, then I need to define some equal equal operator to say what does it mean for these two, two to be equal here. OK, so I actually need to come in and implement somewhere uh, like an op equal here to determine. All right. Uh, because, well, we'll have to talk about op equals a little bit later on, but it sort of does a series of checks to make sure that, you know, these two data, uh, the underlying data in these two data types is equivalent. Um, and this also has to do a little bit with the structure of how classes um, are implemented and allowed inheritance and some other things. But anyway, that's the idea and where we need to be a little bit careful with value types and reference types. OK, now this was the example with classes and structs here. So let me go ahead and kind of uh, reset that experiment and just show you a few other things here. Now let's go ahead and look at a fixed array, one of the basic data types we have here, where I've created two fixed arrays. And I'll set the zeroth element of both of them to 5 here. And let's go ahead and just indent this nicely so that you can see that. And now I'm going to test, is are these two equivalent here? fixed array and fixed array two. Remember they're zero initialized, so they're filled with zeros, except for their first position here. So if I go ahead and run this, well, these in fact are again seen as the same because they are value types here for a fixed array. Okay, that's basically, if I were to do an element by element comparison of these things that are stored on the stack, would they be equivalent? And that's just sort of the semantics in the D programming language for value and reference types. Other pro programming languages might compare the addresses of these two, which we would know are not equal. So for example, if I said, is the address of these two equal? Uh, let's go ahead and run this. Then we don't get any output. OK, so we have to be a little bit careful with some of our equality checks here. Now, you might be wondering or thinking, hey, this is kind of confusing. Well, let's just go ahead to the language reference and let's just go ahead and search for reference uh, type in the language here. Um, or maybe even better, uh, let's go ahead and do reference semantics. And again, you could kind of search around or ask on if you needed uh, help with this, but, um, you know, associative arrays. So again, similar to dynamic arrays have reference semantics. So you can kind of look at each of these features here. Uh, and let me go ahead and put that in here. Reference uh, semantics. So you can look at the actual section um, to see how these things work here. OK, so it's not something to 
scare you with. It's not something, um, you know, that's different than many other languages. In fact, this matches many other languages with how data is passed around. But again, you can craft a little experiment here, but it is something that we do have to keep track of in the language. Uh, it tends to be a good thing once we know how to use value and reference semantics to our advantage, meaning making design decisions to say, yes, I want my structure to be uh, a value type versus something that's using uh, reference semantics like a class and what abilities we get with each of these. So with that said, I hope that's useful. I hope that kind of clears up some of the uh, things that we want to keep track of in the deep programming language. Um, we've been doing this for a few episodes now, but now we should better understand reference types and value types here. All right, folks, so thanks for hanging around for this lesson. I hope you enjoyed. If it's still confusing, be sure to engage in the discussion. Happy to uh, chat. And otherwise, um, as always, thank you for uh, subscribing. Thank you for viewing. And thank you for your time and attention. I'll look forward to seeing you in the next lesson.